The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to you. Glory to you, Lord. One day, when Jesus was praying in seclusion and his disciples were with him, he put this question to them. Who do the crowd say that I am? John the baptizer, they replied, and some say Elijah. And while others claim that one of the prophets of old has returned from the dead. But you, who do you say that I am? He asked them. Peter said in reply, the Messiah of God. He strictly forbade them to tell this to anyone. The Son of Man, he said, must first endure many sufferings, be rejected by the elders, high priests, and the scribes, and be put to death, and then be raised up on the third day. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. This question was put by Jesus in the three Gospels, St. Mark, St. Matthew, and St. Luke. Who do you say that I am? And in response, the one whom Jesus would appoint in the Gospel of St. Matthew in this incident, Peter, answered. You are the Messiah of God. They had been so impressed, his disciples, future apostles, by what he did and what he said. And they were convinced in their heart of hearts that he was the one who has come to save them and the world. This, of course, is the question that each one of us must answer in our heart of hearts. Every time we celebrate the Holy Eucharist, every time we receive Jesus in Holy Communion, he is implicitly asking that question of us. Who do you say that I am? That's not an answer on a quiz program or a catechism class. That is an answer we must give which directs our whole lives 24-7. Because if we say, as Peter, you are the Messiah of God, the one anointed by God, the one sent to save us, Jesus has to take the first place in our lives. He has to be our most important value. Everything has to be oriented to him because it is in him that we reach our true destiny. To live forever with our loved ones and with God and with him and with Mother Mary in eternity. But you know, he did not hide anything from his disciples. He said something that they never expected the Messiah to have to undergo. The Messiah was the ruler. He was going to rule the world. He was to have power beyond imagination. And they were going to be part of his administration, his government. Then he tells them something 
that disrupted them, made them feel uneasy. That this leader, this master of theirs, the one to whom they gave their whole lives in commitment, left everything to follow them, was going to suffer. They could not understand that. And it's only in our own lives that we have to learn also concrete circumstances of our lives, the meaning of Jesus' suffering. It doesn't mean that suffering is a positive value. It means it's a challenge not to come the cost of loving, to be faithful, to be committed, and to love in spite of everything. And that's why Jesus had to suffer. No one can say to Jesus, you do not understand what it is to live in this world. Be part of the evils that swirl around us. Jesus can always say to us, I do understand. That's what I have experienced myself. And therefore, we see that his coming into this world was not only to reveal the Father through what he said, but even more important, 